N never mind, operator. We'll talk about it later. How simple can a sentence be? Here we are. Nous sommes ici, there is tint here, estamos aquí, or as the Russians say... Cleo, what are you doing here? Not that it's a nice thing, you darling, but Henry's supposed to take you directly to the Bel Air Gardens. She won't let me, boss. She said no Bel Air Gardens. She said... Take me to Captain Burke's house. After all, if I'm going to be your guest for the three dreary days I must spend in the provinces, why shouldn't I stay at your house? I bet you have at least uh, 15 rooms here. 19, and you're not using any of them. Oh, but Amos, darling. I reserved a suite for you at the Bel Air Gardens Hotel. It's the most beautiful hotel in this part of the world. It's got everything, electric lights, running water. But it doesn't add you. Oh, and think of all the noise and activity and no privacy. It's the most private place I know. The Bel Air Gardens, most conservative and quiet hotel. Nothing ever happens there. You're not staying here. People might talk. You're staying at the Bel Air Gardens. Captain Burke. Yes, Tim. Mm -hmm. Where? All right, I'll pick you right up. Henry, Miss Fitzgerald will use the East Room. But, Amos, I thought that you... Lightning never strikes in the same place twice, but you never can tell. What? Somebody's just been murdered at the Bel Air Gardens. Let's go, Henry. Second door on the left. Division. This is Detective Tilson, Sergeant Hardy. Pleasure, I'm sure. You called about a homicide? I called about a dead man in the shower. That's a homicide. Then you come to the right place. Where is the shower? There's a dead man in the shower. I'll call the lab boys. All right, let's... you don't mind a few questions? Hmm. Oh, no, no. Go ahead and talk. I'll eat around you. Caviar? Mm. No, thank you. I don't blame you. Tastes like salty BB shot to me. Miss Brewer, is this your room? No. Uh, then... Belongs to the hotel. Uh, what he means is, uh, did you register here? Sure. The nice man gave me the money and I registered. What nice man? Look, I don't know why you're making such a simmer out of all this. Last night about 6 o'clock, I just happened to be walking near the hotel. And this guy comes up to me and offers me $500. He said I should rent a room in the hotel under my name. Have a bar set up and everything. Then, of course, by morning, everybody would be gone. And, well, I could keep the change and use the room. So, I came here. And I found that in there. But I don't think there's anything so unusual about that to you. No. Of course not. Any girl can walk into that kind of situation. Of course. I mean, it's just a happenstance. Now, Miss Brewer, when did you find the body? This morning when I got here. Why didn't you call us then? 
I was hungry. So I ate. Then I got sleepy. So I slept. Well, uh, let's put it another way. Uh, when you woke up and you found the body still here, what was your first reaction? I was hungry. Miss Brewer, what do you do for a living? Favors. Favors? What kind of favor? Just favors. What's the matter? I could do something special? Les, make sure the lab boys get all the prints they can. Tim. Yes, Captain? I think we ought to have a talk to the manager. He may know something. I just talked to him. He saw a car parked outside last night. He wouldn't happen to know who was in it. No, but he got the license number. Why'd he do that? Well, the car was parked on his grass and it made him furious. It makes me very happy. Uh, Miss Brewer, I hope you don't have any plans for the rest of the day. Detective Tilson's going to take you downtown and get a written statement. I'd feed her and take it down. No way to act. The name is not Rover, and I taught her to act that way. Well, that's a nice way to act. She went right for my throat. She thinks she's a doberman. All right, who are you, and what are you doing here before I let Penelope eat you alive? Well, that wouldn't be very friendly of Penelope. Neither of us are very friendly to strangers. Let me introduce myself. Neither of us are very friendly to policemen, either. If you can find some way to reason with her and invite me in, I'd like to talk to you. Penelope, bed. I always thought that a homicide captain wore squeaky shoes and a derby hat. I left them at home. But am I supposed to help you, or have you already solved something? A little of both. Your car was seen parked at the Bel Air Garden Hotel at 6 o'clock this morning. I checked the license number and name to this address. You are Miss Jill Marsh? Captain, you are a regular crackerjack. Why were you there? Well, I don't sleep very well, so sometimes I take early morning rides. To the Bel Air Garden? Well, I'd been driving for quite some while, and suddenly I felt very drowsy, so I pulled over the side and parked. Captain? Are you sure no one phoned you to come to the hotel? Why should someone phone? Well, that's the part you're supposed to tell me. I wish I could. I wish you could, too. I'll just have to find out for myself. Well, Captain, there's something I forgot to tell you. Yes? Well, I'm very particular about my phone number. As a matter of fact, so am I. Well, then why don't we make an arrangement? If either of us want to make a phone call, we won't call each other. That's a reasonable arrangement. But I just had to get your phone number. Forget my number. The Bel Air Garden Hotel has a record of every outgoing call. I'll just call them and check to see if anyone called you. Captain, believe me, when I say there were no calls, there were no calls. Well, believe me, I'll believe you just as soon as I verify it. Oh, uh, say goodnight to Penelope for me. Say goodnight to Penelope yourself. Uh -huh. Good night, Penelope. Yeah. Captain? I've done some checking. Yeah. I learned that a girl named Jill Marsh. Your watch is running behind schedule. I've just been there, Tim. Did she tell you that she received a call from the Parisian suite at 5.32 this morning? No. Who called her? I got a possibility. The dead man has been identified as Jason Shaw, 34, high-flying taro financier. And a corporate boy genius from New York. Yeah, I checked his New York office, and while Shaw was getting dead out here, he was supposed to be on a week's vacation skiing in Vermont. Check his West Coast office, see what you can get. I'm already there, Captain. Naturally. Goodbye. Miss Wagner? May I call you, Marion? Miss Wagner will do just fine. Now, are you sure there's nothing unusual you can tell me about Mr. Shaw that might help us? No. But tell me about your duties. I was Mr. Shaw's secretary. Did you work for him in New York, too? No. Just here? Yes. Mr. 
Mr. Shaw was a man of good taste. What? Was Mr. Shaw's secretary in New York as pretty as you are? I beg your pardon? I asked if Mr. Shaw's secretary in New York was as pretty as you are. Do you think I'm pretty? Very. Really? Really. <laughs> Mr. Shaw receive any unusual mail or phone calls? Well, not that I know of. Is there anything else you would like to know? Did anybody come to the office that you feel might have something to do with this? Well, nobody came to the office at all. Mr. Shaw conducted his affairs away from the office at restaurants or on the golf course. You see, we only worked here in the office from midnight till 5 a.m. Mr. Shaw liked the dark. He used to play the radio a lot. Sometimes we'd dance around the office for hours. Then if he got hungry, I'd fix him a melted cheese sandwich, which is almost the only thing he ever ate. That and root beer. Do you really think I'm pretty? Yeah, beautiful. Very beautiful, Miss Wagner. Marion. Marion. You can call me Tim. Okay. Tim? Yes. Do you dance? Yes. Would you like to dance with me? Sure. How about tomorrow night? How about tonight? I don't think this is going to solve quick. What are the photographs? A Parisian suite, almost every angle. What about the fingerprints? Mostly smudged. Well, fine. I like the way this case is shaping up. We've got a little something might interest you. What? It's in the lab. Lead on, Mike Duff. Two of our lab techs picked these up in the fireplace, the Parisian suite. Put them up on the screen. They're not counterfeit, Captain. We had them checked out. You don't need a slide for that unless those are thousand dollar bills. Have any idea what they come to? Oh, maybe 90, 100 of them. Well, at least the case is getting a little more character. How's that? Anybody who can burn up $100,000 can't be all mad. Good night, Les. Good morning, Tim. Well, you look terrible. Who is she? I uh, wasn't a girl, Captain. Don't tell me you've been out working all night. Well, exactly. I dropped by Jill Marsh's answering service. I figured she fits in somewhere. What'd you find? Jill Marsh received over 40 phone calls in two months from Crestview 14699. See who the phone's registered to. I did, sir. Burton Reese. You know, he's a stock market mogul company liquidator. Would you mind getting me the phone, please? Excuse me, Captain. You weren't going to call Jill Marsh, were you? Certainly. I wanted to find out what the connection was between her and Reese. I've already called her, sir. She isn't in. Well, then, I'd better get hold of Reese. I hope you won't mind. I've already done that. He is in. Well, then, we'll take a little ride and see him. Or have you done that, too? I was going to, but then I thought you might want to. It's a good thing you've got a captain around here to get things done. Yes, sir. After you. That'll be the day. What can I do for you, Devin? Are you Mr. Reese? Yes, I am. Therese. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, don't ask it next to that plant. That's a flesh-eating little devil. Might take your arm off. You're going to say that if I put my hand in this... <laughs> I suggest you keep your hands in your pocket. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Mr. Therese, why were you in the Parisian suite yesterday morning? Oh, well, I don't really consider it important, do you? We do. 
The man was murdered there. Oh, my, my, that's shocking. May I ask who the person was? Jason Shaw. You know him? Oh, very ambitious, energetic man. Excuse me. Here you are, you little baby beauty. I beg your pardon. She just loves leg of lamb. Oh, yes, it's quite obvious. Were, uh, were you in that suite with Mr. Shaw? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was. Just you and Mr. Shaw? Was Miss Jill Marsh with you? Now, fish, dear. No, 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 no arguments. Iodine is good for you. Now, what were you saying? I was saying, was Miss Marsh in the suite with you? No, she was in the car waiting for me. At six o'clock in the morning? Well, I think a man is entitled to have breakfast with his own daughter, don't you think? Daughter? Mr. Reese, why does she call herself Jill Marsh? Is that her married name? No, Jill has never been married. She sculpts. And she wants to sell her work on its own merit, not because she's my daughter. Oh, dear, dear, yes, yes, yes. Here we are. Vitamins, dear. Oh, that's a pretty baby. Oh, it hurts, you know, but sometimes one has to be stern. Forgive my curiosity, but um, why do you grow these kind of plants? Because one day they will take over the world, and the world will be better for it. And when they do, they will always remember they had one friend. Me. Look, friend, uh, getting back to you, Mr. Shaw, there were just the two of you in his suite. So? So, Mr. Reese, you could use a witness. Yes, I very well could, couldn't I? Well, I hate to implicate him, but that used car man, that Hamilton give him away Murphy, was there. I give him away, and that's the truth, friends. And you are my friends, my good friends, and that's why I like to invite you into my own living room for these little talks during the movie. And it is a good movie tonight, isn't it, folks? I just love these westerns. Something about... Uh, well, uh, this mystery happens to be very good, too, isn't it, friends? And uh, I don't want to take any more of your time now, friends, but remember, if you're in the market for a late model used car, you know where to find us. We're located on the corner of Gage and Alvarado. And remember the name, friends. Give them away, Murphy. And now, back to our movie, friends. Cops here, yes? No. That Fink, Reese? At least you warned you they were coming, that's something. That dirty rat, Fink. Relax, baby, you bust a tendon. He says, Tom, I was supposed to be having a friendly business conference. Me having a friendly business conference? What does he think the cops expect me to be doing? Selling one of my cars to a friend? I mean, a real friend? Relax, you're getting all excited, Hammy. Well, you gotta watch those cops once they get the hooks into you. Ten years ago, I'm selling cars on my lot. So I put a little ground cork in a transmission that makes it nice and smooth, you know. A detective buys it. Next thing I know, I'm doing six months in the county workhouse. Lois would like a martini, Hammy. And then I get out, see? And there's a new used car lot right across from me. And who's selling the cars over there? The detective who set me up for six months! Mr. Murphy. That's right. Oh, we're with Homicide Division. May we come in? Oh, but you already are in. After all, there's nothing up my sleeve except my arm. <laughs> oh, I'd like you to meet my business associate, Miss Gordon. Uh, now, what is it that I can do for you, gentlemen? Well, I was wondering if you could tell us where you were yesterday morning at 6 a.m. Oh, I guess I was in bed. Uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, by George, I wasn't. Well, by George, where were you? Uh, I was at the Bel Air Gardens having a business conference with Mr. Burton Reese. And who else? Hammy. Uh, just a minute, dear. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Mr. Jason Shaw. Mm, anyone else? Oh, I couldn't say. Did Mr. Reese make any phone calls while you were there? As a matter of fact, he did. He called his daughter and told her to come over and pick him up, and they went off together. Leaving you alone with Mr. Shaw? Honey, baby. Just a minute, dear. Yes, I suppose I was alone with Mr. Shaw. What would you say if by being alone with Mr. Shaw, you'd become our principal murder suspect? Honey, would you make me... Relax! Really? Well, everybody else is starting to think on everybody else, so I guess it's my turn. There was somebody else there. Who? A Mr. Janik Sabowski, a Polish shipbuilder, I think. Oh, thank you, Mr. Murphy. I'll check with you again. Now, listen, you know, I don't like to rat on people. You understand what I mean? But you've got to watch out for yourself in this world, right? right? Everybody's for themselves. An eye for an eye, right? Maybe. Tooth for a tooth. And never turn your back on a stranger because you wind up with a knife on your back, right? Oh, uh, oh, yes. There you are again, friends. Good evening. And uh, you all know you are my friends. Yes, sirree. All the deal is to say that... 
Give him away, Murphy is crazy, and for a good reason. A very good reason. Mr. Sebastian, see you now. Thank you very much. Well, this oriental decor. He sold his first ship in Japan. Janik, please. There, I've heard it for the fifth time. And each time it is better. Amashek, it's been such a long time. Janik, it's good to see you again. I'd like to meet Detective Tilson. How are you, young fella? Just fine, sir. What happened to all your paintings? Oh, I give them away. I shall never touch a brush since I discovered the true art. True art? Yes, sound paintings. When you listen, you see, not paintings. Just sound. See. This is my blue boy. You see it? Close your eyes. You like it? Yes, I like it very much. You like it, Tim? Yeah, I, I like it, sir. Wait, I give it to you. I give it to both of you. Sonic, we couldn't take it. Uh, no, sir, we just couldn't. It's so, all right, I'll send it to you. Now, tell me, Amishay, why you suddenly think of your old friend and come here to visit me? I'm afraid this trip is more business than pleasure. I suppose you read where Jason Shaw was murdered? Oh, yes. Terrible thing. And to think I was with him just before he was killed. You wouldn't happen to remember what time you left. Oh, I would say about six o'clock. I go out with Mr. Rees and uh, that automotive genius. Uh, you mean, uh, give him away, Murphy? That's him. Now, why would you call him a genius? I should sell ships like he sells cars. He is a genius. <laughs> well, the three of you all alibi each other. Alibi? I don't understand. Well, that's something nice to have if you've been in the same room with a murdered man. I still don't understand, but you make it sound so nice. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. You've been a great help. It's been very nice for me. You come back. Yeah. Both of you. Goodbye, I'm a shake. Young fella. Wait in the car. Hi. Hi. Where's Penelope? Home. Too bad I miss her. Penelope just happens to be a very alert watchdog. Penelope happens to be a little monster with unresolved conflicts who should be taken to the nearest psychiatrist. That doesn't explain anything. What do you want explaining? Well, let's start with, what are you doing here? Captain, I want you to know that my father's innocent. I wish I had your confidence. And I don't see why you have to bully him around. Why don't you pick on those other three men? There are a couple of reasons. First, I haven't bullied your father. Next, I don't know what three men you're talking about. Those three men I saw leaving after my father left in the car. You saw three other men? Why didn't you tell me that before? You didn't ask me. Excluding your father, we found two other men. Now, are you sure you saw three? Would I lie to you? I'd rather not answer that. All right, if you saw what you think you saw... I don't think anything. I saw what I saw. There was a fourth man in that room. Well, you're a detective. Why don't you go and look for him? Miss Marsh, he could be anywhere in the country by now. Why don't you go to the country? Miss Marsh, there's just one thing I'd like to say. What? Goodbye. Okay, Henry. Okay. 
him, it just doesn't float. What's that, sir? It doesn't seem logical to me that a man like Jason Shaw, a corporative man, would have business dealings with a company liquidator like Reese. Or a used car giant like Murphy and a shipbuilder like Janik. Well, why not? Well, they're diverse personalities. Their backgrounds, they just don't fit. Yet they rented the suite. Yeah, the question is why. I'd also like to find out why someone burnt up ninety or hundred thousand dollars in this room. Let's go for broke, Tim. You take that part of the room. I'll take this. If we only had an idea, clue as to what they were doing here. Whatever it was, it must have been a big deal. Yeah. What'd you say? Well, they were all rich, so I figured they had a big deal cooking. Yeah, but not the kind of deal you're thinking of. Do you have that report from the lab? Yes, sir. Did they find anything on this table? Not much, Captain. Tobacco strands, ashes, and cellulose flakings. Of course. Cellulose from a deck of playing cards, Tim. There it is. There's your big deal. But why should they be so secretive about a card game? Do you remember rumors of a poker game played by some of the wealthiest men in this country? Played once a year, pretty high stakes? Very high. The limit was one million dollars. Good morning, Captain. You're entitled to your opinion. Something tells me I better disappear. No, no, no. Stay. I've been going over the file on your case. Did you find anything? A lot of questions and no answers. For example, what does all that burnt money mean? Hard to say. Here's another. If Jill Marsh were telling the truth, who was the fourth man in the room? Probably another poker player. And did the fourth man stay behind with Jason Shaw? And was he the killer? Well. And here's another item. Does Shaw's West Coast secretary, Marion, fit into the picture? Did you find out anything from her? Nothing that you don't already know, sir. There. You said it. That's the word that's the key to this entire case. Nothing. Where are you going? Oh, to see that give him away Murphy again. Well, do you think that Murphy is our most promising suspect? Not necessarily, but he's the biggest liar. Are you comfortable there, Captain? Mr. Murphy, I'll be a lot more comfortable when you answer my question. Well, sure, Captain. What were you saying? I was saying that we have evidence to prove that you were in a card game Tuesday night and part of Wednesday morning. And that somebody hired a girl named Lucy Brewer to register the hotel room in her name. All right, what are you trying to make out of it? Eleven worth beef? I just want to find out who hired her. You ain't going to get nothing on me and wind up like that other cop selling my cars? Mr. Murphy, kindly be assured that I have no interest in selling your cars. Well, there ain't nobody don't wish they had my volume. Mr. Murphy, I'm afraid you'll be out of business unless you give me the information I need. Now, who hired that girl? All right, I did. She was walking along, and she looked kind of lost. And I stopped the car, I started talking with her. And I give her the money to make the reservation. So what's the secrecy? Well, you don't advertise a million-dollar game, Captain. The government might find out about it and try and tax your winnings. Besides, somebody might think it's illegal. I have news for you. It is definitely illegal. Well, then you mean I'm in real big trouble, huh? Oh, yes. Unless you cooperate, you could be in very big trouble. Oh, now, Captain, you're looking at the biggest cooperator you ever saw. All right. What were the names of the players in the game? Oh, now, wait a minute, Captain. I can't remember all those names. Well, Shaw was there. You know that. By the way, what do you look like when you found him? Like that. Was there a big winner in the game? Of course there was. You ever hear of giving away Murphy, giving anybody anything? I won. 700 grand. And I'm going to send the government a check first thing in the morning. Do you remember your best hand? I couldn't forget it. I opened with three jacks. Reese called, Sabosky passed, Shaw raised, and Julian passed. Hey, you're not as bad on names as you give yourself credit for. Who's Julian? Murphy, you and your big fat mouth. Who's Julian? Well, I guess three guys can dump you in the river just as good as two. Murphy, who's Julian? Julian Clarington. He's a real kook. He even brought his own booze. 
Thank you, Mr. Murphy. It's been nice dealing with you. Oh, Captain, you're not going to tell nobody where you got this information. Oh, no, no, no. We make it a practice of protecting our principal witness. Even a rat fink like me? Even a rat. Goodbye, Mr. Murphy. You know, we may have started a completely new police procedure. Huh? How's that? Who ever heard of the suspect sweating out the detective? Hello, Captain. What brought you here? The same thing that brought you, sir. I want to talk to Mr. Clarington. How'd you hear about him? Well, I got an idea. And I went back to the Bel Air Gardens and I located all the bottles that were taken out of the room. And I found three pints of 29 Chateau Major. And you checked out every liquor store in the neighborhood? Yes, sir, and I found it was sold in only one store. I called the store, and the proprietor gave me the name of Mr. Julian Clarington. Tim, you deserve a raise. Thank you, sir. I can't give it to you, but you deserve it. This is some house, huh? It's fair. Am I fair? I'd like to see Mr. Julian Clarington. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but all of Mr. Clarington's appointments are arranged for the morning. Well, uh, see if he can arrange one for this afternoon. Uh, oh, well, I'm, I'm sure he can, sir. Uh, he's in the wine cellar. Uh, won't you please go down? Jameson, how many times have I told you to avoid that board? Your clumsiness has caused a veritable earthquake. Oh, no, Mr. Clarington, no, no, it isn't me, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Clarington. Blame it on us. And who, may I ask, are you? I'm Detective Tilson. This is Captain Berkwood from Homicide. Oh. Well, I have neither maimed, eviscerated, nor killed anyone recently. Now, will you kindly leave? It won't take long, Mr. Clarington. It has already taken too long. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Clarington, we want to talk to you about a poker game. Well, whip one up with the boys at the station house, but please stop annoying me. We're referring to a poker game that took place at the Bel Air Gardens Hotel. Oh, how interesting. Well, we'll discuss that some other time. I'm sorry, Mr. Clarington. I'm very sorry, but I'll have to insist. Who is the big loser in that game? Well, you might say I lost a considerable sum. And all to that boorish automobile salesman. Then you lost most of the money. Oh, very likely. How long have you been playing in the game? I conceived the game some uh, four years ago. You might think me a socialist. I suppose I am to a certain degree. But then you see, I am a firm believer in the distribution of wealth. To me. Did you leave directly after the game? Naturally. Naturally. How long have you known Jason Shaw? Oh, uh, a very recent acquaintance. Very recent? Yes. I suppose you know that Mr. Shaw has been murdered. It may interest you to know that I have a theory on that. I'd be very interested. I should say that someone was not too fond of Jason Shaw. So what's your theory? That's it. Now, gentlemen, if you will excuse me, I cannot say that any of this has been a pleasure. My native honesty would prohibit it. Mr. Clarington. Forgive me, I have a plane to catch. Mr. Clarington, there are a few more questions I'd like to ask you. Sir, I have given you a lengthy audience from that which I allowed the President of the United States. You have been more than generous. Sir, if you insist on discussing this matter, it must be at some more propitious time. Meanwhile, if you are trying to drag me into this murder affair, be assured that I have an impeccable alibi and can account for every moment of my time. And so... Good afternoon. I do not want to have to put you under warrant. <laughs> you will not deter me with intimidation. Should you desire further information, you may contact my secretaries in Bangkok, Shanghai, or Paris. That's out of our precinct. Mm. My heart goes up to you. Uh, Mr. Clarington. Young man. Sir, if you have disturbed the bouquet of this rare vintage, you may be certain that I will sue not only you, but the city and county of this sovereign state. Ruined. Young man, I regret to inform you that your career has just reached an ignominious conclusion. So has your trip. Burke 
speaking. This is Les. Jill Marsh called here, said she had a statement. Did she say where she was calling from? No, just that she'd be home at nine tonight. All right, I'll be there at nine. Oh, is Tim around? Just a minute. Tim. Captain. Sir? Tim, I'd like you to drop a subpoena to investigate Shaw's local books. Yes, sir. Read them over, see if you can link anything up. Yes, sir. Is something wrong? No, sir, there's nothing wrong. Miss? <gasps> oh! Miss, would you be interested in buying a set of encyclopedias? I'm studying to be police commissioner. If it isn't Fred Astaire. If it isn't Ginger Rogers. Dad? Marion, I'm here on business. Oh, come on, you're so good. I'd love to, Marion, believe that. But I gotta play detective right now. What's that? Subpoena. Permits me to appropriate all of Mr. Shaw's books, his files, and any documents of interest. What are you trying to do to him? He's dead. Why don't you just leave him alone? Marianne, murders have to be solved, and we do the best way we can. Well, I don't see any reason why you have to investigate into his business affairs. He was honest and respectable. And you loved him. Yes, I loved him. But you'll keep prying and piecing until everything looks unclean. Marin, it does only some other way. I'll get you the books. Here are the keys. Marin. They'll open up everything in the office for you. Marin, I... In fact, they'll open up his entire life for you. Baby. Penelope's all right. Penelope just learned about Burke's law. What's that? When you constantly attack, and just make sure that somebody isn't waiting with a net. Why don't you leave her here on the porch? You and I can talk while she sits there hating me. See you again, Miss Marsh? It's nice to see you again, Captain. I understand you have a statement to make. Yes, I do. Let's have dinner. That's a very thoughtful invitation. What's the rest of your statement? That's all. What are you trying for now? Captain, you think there's something up my sleeve. <laughs> Not in that dress. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I'm on duty. Where will you be off duty? Well, just as soon as I find out who killed Jason Shaw. Where would that be? It's hard to tell. The killers all have something in common. When you ask them if they've killed anyone, they usually say no. Captain, I like the set of your doll. I think I'd better call my office. What do you know? If I didn't know you better, I'd swear that you stepped on a button. Yes? Oh, yes. Yeah. You did. It's for you. Captain Butt. Captain, I've been going through Shaw's files. Did you find anything interesting? Yes, sir. A private memo from his board of directors in the East. They plan to investigate his entire corporation for fraud. All right, you and I bring the books to my place. I'll meet you there. Well, uh, excuse me. I have to leave urgent business. You know, we must do this again sometime. Over your dead body. Captain of homicide murdered. Now, how would that read in print? <laughs> Well, Shaw's corporation was about to go under. Well, it looks like he wasn't going to wait around for the main event. Hmm. Here's an airline ticket to Brazil. One way. No extradition. Which leaves us with just about the same questions. One of the poker players must have killed Shaw. But who and why? What about Reese? B, his daughter should have been working hard on me. I think our wine cellar friend there, Clarington, looks good. 
No, he'd only kill one man. That'd be Murphy. And even if he did, I'm afraid it would turn out to be justifiable homicide. How about Murphy? Too stupid. Captain, what about your friend there, uh, Janik Zabowski? Could be, but he'd need a motive. How long has Shaw been in business? Uh, about six years, I think. Let's see. Yeah, six years exactly. Six years? Doesn't seem like enough time to build up a corporation worth millions. Boy comes from out of the blue, jumps over the moon in one easy lesson. He needs something. He needs some help. Financing, a loan. I was saving that for you. It seems that three million dollars was invested in Shaw's corporation by Burton Reese. Well, things are getting a little more colorful. Uh, by the way, Marion said that uh, before the game, Shaw came in and took eight thousand dollars out of the safe. And that's all there was. If Shaw was in such bad trouble, why did he get into the poker game? He may have needed some getaway cash. Nobody knew he was broke. He probably flashed that 8,000 like, like less than flash eight. Yeah, yeah. It is beginning to make sense. Tim, I think I'd better take a little trip to visit Mr. Therese. Let's get this stuff back to the office, will you? Captain? Yes? I just had a thought. What? If Reese should confess, they would get his daughter off your neck. We'll appeal to him on that basis. Henry? Henry, wake up! Cocktail. Good evening, Mr. Reese. Good evening, Captain Burke. It's a little late for uh, gardening, isn't it? No, no. Some of these little darlings have to be fed late at night. <laughs> Vegetarian. Oh, no, no, don't, don't stand too close to that particular plant. I stood too close and... Uh... It grabbed you. Ooh. You seem to enjoy living dangerously. You mean my plans? Oh, that and the fact that you're willing to gamble three million dollars in Jason Shaw's corporation. Seemed like a reasonable gamble at the time. The firm had no assets. They're on the verge of bankruptcy now. Oh, isn't that delightful? You act as if you enjoyed losing three million dollars. Well, you'll have to admit, it's a delightful tax loss. Oh. You see, I've had very bad luck with tax deductions for several years now. Yes, as for Shaw, I was always hoping that he would be bankrupt. Nothing personal, from a tax viewpoint, of course. How do you think he got the money to start his business? I didn't know him then. I couldn't care less. But I doubt that the money was deductible. <laughs> You can write it off. Yes, yes, I can. I'm sorry, sir, but we just can't find any connection between Shaw and the other poker players. I checked Reese. His story matches. He's got so much money, it's almost vulgar. That brings us right back to who loaned Shaw the money that got him started. Well, it could be any one of almost a million people. But if it was someone at the poker game, we could narrow it down to three. We could eliminate Murphy. He's newly rich. He didn't have any money six years ago when Shaw first started. That leaves only two. No. Maybe it leaves one. Excuse me. Why did you first meet Jason Shaw? Oh, maybe three, four years ago. Are you sure you haven't known him for more than four years? Yes, sure, Mr. That would be, uh, 1959. Sure, 1959, 1960. What happened at the poker game? The game is over maybe six o'clock. I forget my glasses. Come back. I find him on the telephone. He's talking to some girl about leaving the country. How did you know it was a girl? He called her sweet names. Marion? You know, secretary friend Marion keeps cropping up. Look, she admitted she loves Shaw. She's not hiding anything. Well, somebody is. Clarington's the only one left. Do we go see him? Maybe. But I can't shake the feeling that we're looking up the wrong tree or at least the wrong poker player. Well, if we want to see Clarington, we'll probably have to get your plane. 
What did you say? I said we'll probably have to catch a plane. That's it, Tim. The plane, the plane the show was going to catch. I don't follow. Well, the clue is so simple. It was right in front of us all the time. Any paperback addict would have recognized it. What clue? The safety box. Let's pick that up, and then we pick up his killer. Marion? Marion. Oh. I'm sorry. Marion, this is Captain Burke, Captain Ms. Wagner. How do you do, Mr. Burke? Well, don't you gentlemen ever sleep? Miss Wagner, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Oh, well, I've told Tim all I know. Except for one little thing. What's that? Why did you kill Jason Shaw? <laughs> oh, you're quite an act. He's a dancer and you're a comedian. Well, how's this for laughs? Shaw called you from Parisian suite and you went to see him. That's ridiculous. He told you he was leaving for Brazil. He loved me, Mr. Burke. If he were going to Brazil, he would have taken me with him. On one ticket? Shaw planned to leave town after the game. He had left a ticket in the safety box. He asked you to bring it to him. You can't prove that. You can't prove anything. You're only guessing. For a while, we were. It was so simple, I couldn't even see it. Shaw phoned for a limousine to take him to the airport. Now, he wouldn't have done that if he hadn't expected someone to bring the ticket to him. That's not true. And then you found out that he didn't intend to take you with him. Now, what did you do? You hit him over the head with the poker. You dragged his body into the shower. I loved him. And you made one little mistake. You put the ticket back into the safety box. The habit of a good secretary. Yes, habit. Why did you burn $100,000? I loved him. I loved him, don't you understand? Him, not his money. I didn't want any part of it. Mary, what'd you put in the shower? He lied to me. He lied to everybody. He was dirty. Filthy clear through. But I loved him. I wanted him to die clean. Take it down and book her. First degree murder. It hurts. Sometimes it's a very lousy job. Yeah. But it's the only job we have. Mm -hmm. Come on down, I'll buy a cup of coffee. 